We are here with Dave Davis to talk about the new PSR rifle. If you go to the dictionary and you look up subject matter expert, there's a picture of Dave right here under sniper rifles and sniper operations. Dave, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you got right here? Well, we got the PSR, multi-barrel, multi-caliber precision sniper system. The latest and the greatest thing out on the market, and I'm going to tell you, Remington has knocked it out of the ballpark. That this thing, thing comes in the, uh, the 308, 300 mag, and the uh, closest going to get the NATO standardized sniper round is a 338 Lapua. Excellent gun, excellent gun. Got a lot of rounds, a lot of time behind this gun, and I've, I've, I've found a new love. Great, great, great weapon system. What do you like best about it? 20 different men out there. You got 20 different sizes and shapes, right-handed and left-handed. Totally module from length of pull to total. I can put all my current night vision, laser systems, and everything else on this thing. And this thing's ready to go to war. And it's so user-friendly, so modular, and I can adjust it for everybody with the short guy to the long guy to the big guy to the little guy. And it's compatible with all current uh, lasers, lights, and uh, night vision systems we have in the system. Awesome, awesome. All right, all right. Talk to us a little bit about swapping these barrels out. Talk about it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. First thing we got to do is make sure our gun is clear. To get the bolt out of this gun, we're going to have to uh, collapse the stock and actually physically remove it. Unlike our standard Remington 700s we're so accustomed to with the bolt releases on the bottom, physically on the top. Simply take it off to the side. It has a, uh, a barrel system very similar to the M4. Not only similar, but the, the, spork, the torque spec is the exact same. Just like Dad used to say, righty tighty lefty loosey, we're going to take our little 35 inch pounds of uh, torque wrench here, put it up here. 35 pounds is not, a little quick little tap. She breaks loose. Go ahead and spin it off. What do you say we swap this to 308? Bigger change. Well, this gun does come in a uh, 338 Lapua and 301 Mag. The, the, the changing requirements are the exact same between those two Magnum calibers. The 308 is slightly different because it's a short action round. We're going to have to put a mag block in there. Exactly. That's what I want to do. I'm going to make it a little harder for you. There you go. We're going to go ahead and remove this, pull it straight on out. Very similar barrel extension to your old M4 AR-15 with is. the index pin as well. We do simply have to remove that barrel nut. We're going okay. to use it over and over. Let me exchange with you there. No, I, the bolt's already in there. We're bolt going to pull face. this bolt out. And if you got any problems, we got three different bolts, three different barrels, actually indexed on the bottom to which nice. one. Set that off side next to our bolt. We're going to take very gingerly, slide this on there, not to mess with our threads. Pull it all the way up there. Take a note of the of my indexing pin. I'm going to slightly elevate this to get my nut to slide down in there with it. Slide it right on down in there. I'm going to get started. Level her back down. If you'll notice, I'm going to rotate around until I see my index pins there. Make sure she's fully seated. Get that nut back in there. Get my nut back in there. I'm just go in here and get her nice. Bring her tight as far as she'll go. Take my same wrench. If you'll just support the gun there for me. I sure will. Index it. Take yeah. another bite. You're going to hear a little metallic click. That, That's it. there she goes. Now we're going to turn our attention to our bolt. Once we get our torque wrench There off. she goes. Now your old, your old Remington bolt before you'd simply counterclockwise mm -hmm. to unscrew it. This one we're going to do about an eighth of a turn and it's spring loaded and it's going to slide right on out. I got a little pin up here. I'm going to capture that pin, slide this out, slide mm -hmm. my little pin out. That. Now I'll hand you my 338 Lapua bolt. And I'm going to put it back in the My barrel. 308 barrel. I will ensure that I in fact have it. I have a little index pin on the bottom. And it's self-explanatory. Going it. in there until my hose lines up and pops into place. Nice. My little screw there, which would look like a screwdriver, yep. is actually a line indicating downrange. I'm going to simply slide that in there. Ensure it's flush and pointed downrange. Insert my firing pin back in there with my two lug lock system. Oops. Okay, just that little eighth of a turn again, there. So you don't have to use a dime like you did. Um, Absolutely not, reinsert nice. it into the gun. Nice. And there you go. Now, taking note between my two long 301 mag and 338 magazines, you notice my shorter 308. My so how are we gonna compensate right that difference? We are gonna insert a magazine block. You exactly. We'll simply stand this up, and in there we have a captured screw. We'll simply slide it into place, 
lock it, get my bolt, my mag release, fully in thing, take my 65 inch pounds. Now that torque wrench is also preset to 65 inch Preset pounds. for 65 pounds. It's not only preset for 65 pounds, it's also the same wrench to take the action out of the stock as well nice. as to, to separate the stock form. Awesome. Now that we have that inserted, it is now ready to receive the 308 10 round magazine. Nice. That's it. As quick as he talked us through it, that's as quick as swapping calibers out. Now, Dave, uh, surely that can't be accurate swapping calibers. I get that question all the time, all the time. We are talking about the same weapon system in three different calibers, adding the suppressor, taking the suppressor off, adding the barrel, taking the barrel back on. This is an outstanding weapon system. Submitted of angle in all calibers, minimal if any shift whatsoever from the uniqueness from each gun to the gun. But as we go out and shoot this gun and we see the accuracy capability and take the barrel, put it back on in, in repeatability, and then adding of the Suppressor, which is a 338 caliber suppressor, but we can use on all three all barrels. Three calibers. So, adding it, we're getting very, very minimal shift, but it's very predictable from gun to gun to gun. So, in my ballistic apps, I simply annotate that under my notes, and I'm able to go from one caliber through some historical knowledge mm -hmm. of get out on that range and shoot and know your system, and we're having absolutely no problems whatsoever. And because it's repeatable, like you said, getting out there, having the knowledge of your system, gathering that data, as long as it's repeatable, you can do that. And I remember we had it out at the range. We kept swapping back and forth, back and forth, till it got old. I have got that question so many times. The only way to simply answer that question is, see is believing. There we go. I said, hey, you want to see this thing in action? Let's go to the range. And they leave there going, wow. We're torquing to the same spec, seating to the same depth, same harmonics and everything. It's, it's great. This gun is, is, like I said, Remington's hit a home run. Hit a home run. Definitely did. Um, Besides just the gun, you talked about the sexy suppressor, the three calibers. Uh, what are some of the other G Wiz uh, 21st century gizmos that are pushing our snipers above and beyond anybody else on the planet? We got an outstanding Schmidt and Bender scope here. It comes with a trimmer two reticle, universe of all the calibers. We have these Weaver base, I mean, these Picatinny base bases here that mm -hmm. will receive, receive any current issued night vision out there or lasers. Why don't you hand me one of them over there? Hand me that I most will current do PBS just 30. That. Let's do this. This is the this latest is... and the greatest right here, a Night Industries laser. I have this excellent day, day scope that's already zeroed, set up. I got mm. ballistic data. I got it ready to go. The sun goes down. I simply add it. We're ready to go to war. So instead of having to carry a whole separate upper that would have night vision on it, these guys are already carrying all this up the mountain. They don't need all that extra weight. They just throw this on, and now they're able to go through the whole night. Sun just went down. Sun just come up. Nice. The 30, the 24, the 26, throw them on there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, what else you got? What other G Wiz gadgets? Well, well, if we're going to be talking about night vision, what well, can we do some things we can do to augment that night vision? How about mm. some of my various lasers? Ah, let's start with the big one. Oh, the big one. The big one gives us many capabilities. This is the 23, <clears throat> the Storm. It gives me a laser range of fine capabilities, long way out there, as well as illumination and a visible The fine long range out there, because a lot of uh, the laser range finders that you find on the civilian market, it'll be the X1000, and the reality is it really won't reflect off of a deer or a two-legged mammal out past about 600. What's the real well, range on this? Good thing? point, good point. The reflectability of the target is gonna there dictate go. this capability. If I have a flat-sided building out there with a tin roof, you're gonna get some good data and you're gonna get, if you have a, a man out there, it's got a big wool jacket on, he's not gonna be real reflective. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the data we get off these is under ideal circumstances. Okay. If you have a man standing next to a building and you can't get a good splash on him, Get the building. Get the building, absolutely. Okay. And then not only the, the storm, as well as we got the LA-5, some of the older PQ-2 stuff. Mm -hmm. And given the, uh, the modularity of the system, we can go right side, left side. We can do lights. We can do lasers. We can do, we can, you know, if it's totally pitch dark, mm -hmm. everybody thinks this, this is going to turn the night into day. Not Still necessarily. Still need that ambient light. You got to have that ambient light. It magnifies what's there. I'm a big fan of using uh, the illuminators, especially if there's not that much of a threat of the enemy having night vision. And if they do, uh, you, you wait till the last second, the start of the assault countdown, and uh, the illuminator really adds a lot to the fight. Well, not only the illumination to illuminate that area, but 
Night vision is going to take you right up to the edge of the woods, and it's mm -hmm. kind of dark. But that illuminator, I can look down in there like a flashlight. You can. Got a vehicle out there with the windows up, we can look in them windows. Inside. Absolutely. Same thing on a building. You can look through. You can you, definitely it, do that. Good points. What about ballistic uh, computers? Well, in the old days in the Army, we'd look up here and there would be some information about ammunition, dodix, types, calibers, mm -hmm. and all that. And then we'd have some additional set of numbers that would be ballistically set up for that particular caliber, that particular barrel. The old man. BDC. The old BDCs, absolutely. Now we have a universal reticle that's in the scope itself that's just basically a grid pattern. Mm -hmm. And the, your ballistic data that you would retrieve out of either your current issues ballistics, the up and coming data, or you guys go out there and get that app off, offline and put it on your There's phone. There's 20 or 30 different programs. All of them are pretty decent. And that's this week. What's it going to be next yeah, week? exactly. So what it is is when I change these calibers, I just go to my appropriate profile and pull it up, and there I am. And in my notes, I'll have the, the shifts for the one going from 3.0 to 3.0 mag, and I'm ready to go to war. Anything else jumps out, uh, jumps out at you that we missed? I really like, from a professional standpoint, the maintenance on this. If this was a standard bolt action rifle, I would have to send this back, the barrel would have to be removed, put on, and headspace, and machine some true gunsmithing. Mm, yeah. With this, what's stopping me from just calling up the factory and say, send me a new 338 barrel because the bolt comes in at headspace, I can slap it on and keep on going. Nice, very, very nice. You know? All right, so I, I could even have maybe several extra barrels for to anticipate a round count when I'm overseas or something. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. That's a good point. I'd take extra. And they don't cost that much either. Shipping this back there, the time frame, the weight, the you machine. You lose that gun the whole time you're there? I can make a phone call and have them UPSed. Fix it overnight, get the gun back in the fight. I can give that end user, that operator on the ground, the ability to put a new barrel in his gun. Without right. having it to go back. How out of the safe that? house, up on the mountain, they can swap and do the maintenance right there. If I went to a safe house and a guy had a gun and says, my gun shot out. He's got to physically give me that gun. I may or might not be able to give him another one based on MTO and availability. That's true. But I am have the ability now to walk up and say, here's your bear, here's your bolt. Matter of nice. fact, what caliber do you need? And I fixed it. Jack, well, you saw me just change that barrel? I, quick, I just replaced very, the barrel. Very I just replaced the barrel. Brand new gun, ready to Brand go. Brand new gun, ready to go. Awesome. PSR, total home run. Remington has knocked it out of the park here. Dave, thanks for your time, brother. Appreciate it, appreciate it.